Hi, my name is Stephanie Shane and I'm the founder of Pass the OT. Today I will be discussing amputations and prosthetics. When I think of amputations and prosthetics, I think of a movie I recently saw where a gentleman was rock climbing or mountaineering and a boulder landed on his arm and then he actually had to get a Swiss Army knife and break off his arm. So it's really emotional and we have to provide a lot of support to patients who go through this. Um, so in today's video, we will be going over different types of prosthetics, different types of amputations, the treatment and wound care. So let's dive into today's conversation. As we get into amputations and prosthetics, I want to tell you about my friend who was simply walking across the street and she was hit by a bus. Um, she ended up having to get her leg amputated um, recently and she was in the hospital and so she's dealing with that now. So amputations and prosthetics is a really important topic to me because of um, what happened to my friend. As we get into it, I want to let you know of three reasons there's, there are loss of a limb and why it does happen. Um, one, it's congenital deformity, which happens prior to birth or a person is born without a limb or with an incomplete limb. Two is a traumatic amputation, which you can think of my friend. The limb is severed during um, trauma, such as a car accident, work-related accident, etc. Or an additional surgical amputation may be necessary depending on the amount of damage sustained to the remaining limb. So my friend actually had to get her um, leg amputated above the knee. Um, number three is surgical amputation. So removal of the limb determined to be necessary due to infection, cancer, or other diseases. Um, also, limb or part of the limb surgically removed in an adequate distance above the area. So there are different types of amputations. Um, they can be on the upper extremity or the lower extremity. There's different types such as a four quarter, a below an elbow, digital, hip disarticulation, things like that. Um, you can definitely look at our chart for more information about the extremities, types, and the description of it. Um, for this video, we are really going to be looking at amputation management, um, especially when it comes to the pre-prosthetic phase, um, the treatment techniques, the pre-prosthetic phase. Um, that's also really, really important. The types of prosthesis and when it comes to upper extremities, advantages and disadvantages of different types of prosthesis, such as like a body powered prosthetic, uh, the myoelectrical prosthetic, as well as the lower limb prosthetic as well. Um, mostly for occupational therapy, we deal with the upper extremity. So we're gonna go over m many of the components such as the sockets, the units, the terminal devices, and different control options available. Treatment techniques for the prosthetic phase. Um, also prosthetics for children with congenital deformities. And I'll definitely be going over questions related to amputations and prosthetics at the end of the video. In the beginning of this video, I wanna concentrate on the amputation management, the pre-prosthetic phase. So in the pre-prosthetic phase, this phase of treatment manages the healing process of the amputated limb. So it really prepares the limb for the prosthetic use. So we're really trying to prepare it. We adapt to physical and emotional changes regarding actually getting that amputation. So we wanna really consider five different things. So number one is we wanna provide the patient with emotional support. So they really might be feeling depressed due to the loss of a limb or decreased function. Maybe they can't go back to their work or do their leisurely roles like play um, sports with their kids, things like that. So we want to deal with any emotions they may have. Um, there also could be some phantom limb. Those who've had a limb removed report that it can feel as if the amputated limb is still there. This painless feeling is also known as phantom limb sensation. It isn't the same as phantom pain. It usually occurs at the distal end of the extremity. Um, and it's also called phantom pain. So we may be, it may be minimized by distal contact of the stump with the socket or the prosthetic. Um, two is we wanna manage the hygiene. So wound healing at the amputation site, making sure that it's really clean, um, they don't get any ulcers, um, that it's really ready to get that prosthesis on that site. We want to desensitize that limb to touch and pressure in preparation for the prosthetic use. Um, they might be feeling like tingling or numb or sensitive. So we want to really get ready to have that limb hold on to the prosthesis. 
assist to shrink and shrape the limb in preparation for the prosthetic use. And also any special considerations apply um, when fitting the prosthetic for children with congenital deformity. So we really have a section just for children. So we will definitely go into that. In regards to treatment techniques, let's go into the pre-prosthetic phase. So the pre-prosthetic phase is, what are we doing before the prosthetic phase? Um, we really wanna educate about that hygiene and skin care, as I mentioned. So we'll teach the patient to thoroughly wash and dry the residual limb every single day to really inspect the skin for any red areas, blisters, or sores. So an example of educating this patient would be an OT teaches the man with a shoulder art, uh, disarticulation amputation, how to use a long flex handed mirror to check for the skin integrity of the amputation site. So that mirror will really become in handy. Um, also a treatment technique is wound care. So the use of the debridement or the modality techniques are used to prevent infection and promote healing of the surgical site. So for example, um, for a patient with an above elbow amputation, an OT may use electrical stimulation techniques to promote circulation in the area surrounding the surgical site to really increase that blood flow and um, circulation. Wrapping is another treatment technique in the pre-prosthetic phase. Special elastic bandages are used to wrap the residual limb to reduce edema and shape the limb for the prosthetic socket. So an example is a woman with a lower limb amputation. Um, an OT teaches this, per this woman's husband how to use an ACE bandage to wrap the stump to promote a tapered shape. Another technique is the elastic compression stump shrinker. It's an alternative to wrapping and the shrinker is a garment that slides on and off and it's made of elastic fabric that provides compression to the stump. An example of this is the same woman with a lower limb amputation opts to use a lower extremity compression stump shrinker as her husband cannot correctly wrap her stump without the occupational therapist's help. Another um, treatment technique is pain management and desensitization. This is a manual technique to reduce pain and desensitize nerve endings at the amputation site. So these techniques include tapping, which is also called percussion, which is involved tapping on sensitive areas to reset nerve endings massage, both light and deep tissue massage using a variety of techniques. Um, in addition is vibration, fluidotherapy, and weight bearing. So an example is to reduce sensitivity and OT applies 10 minutes of fluidotherapy to a a woman with above elbow amputation followed with deep tissue massage. Mirror box therapy. This is a specialized technique for managing phantom limb pain. A box with a mirror is down the middle is used to provide an image to the patient of the missing arm. The patient places both hands in the box and attempts to send signals to both hands. The process helps reduce phantom pain. An example is when an OT has a patient with a below elbow amputation use a mirror box to attempt to pick up pennies with both hands. Scar management. Treatment techniques to break up and flatten scar tissue at the surgical site allowing a better prosthetic fit and reducing the risk of skin breakdown. Deep heat with modalities such as ultrasound followed with scar massages used to treat scar tissue. An example is when a woman has scar tissue buildup at the site of traumatic thumb and first finger amputation. The OT uses ultrasound and scar massage techniques to soften the scar tissue. Range of motion. Passive and active range of motion exercises are used to prevent joint contracture and improve mobility near the amputation site. An OT provides a home range of motion program for a man with a below elbow amputation to prevent elbow contracture. Strengthening. We definitely use isometric exercises and they're used to strengthen the muscles that will be involved in operating a prosthetic. Electrical stimulation to increase muscle contraction may be used to train the involved muscles prior to prosthetic use. Isotonic and general endurance exercises are also provided to recondition the limb and the patient's overall status after prolonged hospitalization. Exercises may be adapted using cuff weights or an amputee cuff to compensate for a missing hand. An example is when an OT uses electrical stimulation to condition the shoulder girdle muscles of a man who has had a shoulder disarticulation amputation. Muscle learning and re muscle re-education. Therapeutic activities are used to teach upper extremity amputation patients how to incorporate the residual limb into bilateral activities. If a patient has lost his dominant hand, motor learning activities are used to help the patient change hand dominance. So if he was right-handed, we're gonna help him become left-handed. ADL activities are incorporated into motor learning tasks to apply new movement to functional tasks. 
it's really all about function. So we really have to incorporate this motor learning to incorporate um, for new movement in functional tasks. Biofeedback may be used to assist patients in learning to use muscle groups to operate prosthetics. So it's really about biofeedback, ED activities, um, and changing hand dominance for therapeutic functional tasks. An example is when an OT teaches a man with a below elbow amputation of his dominant hand, such as his right hand, how to write with his non-dominant hand. So we want to help him learn to write with his left hand instead of his right hand like he's always been. So now let's get into questions for amputations. So this is how to get every question right using our past OT5 simple steps. Simply fill in the blanks or write it down on your whiteboard and remember the mnemonic. Read with diligence and patience before answering. Step one, read the question carefully. Step two, what is the stage of the OT process? Three, disease or diagnosis, what is the patient's disease? Four, problem, what is the patient's problem, the patient's level of performance, the patient's priorities are gold. Um, next is bold, what is bold or in caps or what says next. And lastly, what is the answer? So is the answer addressing the problem, question, or goals? An OT is working with a seven-year-old boy who recently underwent an above elbow amputation due to a gunshot. What kind of prosthesis would the OT initially recommend in this situation? Okay, so what do we know about this question? Where are we in the OT process? Well, we are in the intervention stage. And what is the patient suffering from or um, is, why are we seeing this patient? Um, well, they just underwent an above elbow amputation. And what's important about this question? What is the question really asking us? It's asking us to determine what kind of prosthetic would the OT initially recommend in this situation due to the above elbow amputation. All right, so now we're ready to go to the answer choices. Is it no prosthesis, mild electrical prosthesis, body powered prosthesis, or passive cosmetic prosthesis? And this is for a seven year old boy. So the answer is C, body powered prosthesis. Since the boy has recently lost his arm, he will need to learn which remaining muscles to activate to make a prosthesis work. A body powered prosthetic uh, prosthesis with a hook would give this boy practice in activating the correct muscles to open and close the hook while giving him a functional prosthetic arm. Body powered prosthesis are generally more robust and reliable and may require shorter training periods. Once the boy has learned how to activate his muscles, he may then be ready to try a myoelectrical prosthesis. Here's our taste of our full 27 minute video, which is only available when you sign up for the Pass OT web course. Once you purchase a subscription to our program, you will have unlimited access to all of our learning material, including this very informative video, which gives you an in-depth look at amputations and prosthetics. Including in the video is information on types of amputations, management, treatment techniques, advantages and disadvantages of different prosthetics, parts, components, treatment techniques, and prosthetics for children with congenital deformities. We will also have more question breakdowns.